Greetings everyone! I'm Ida Jones and I've created this series of videos to introduce you to our Faculty Learning Communities program and your role as facilitator. In this first video I talk about Faculty Learning Communities in general and your role in particular. In the others I talk about meetings, funding, and how to get rolling on it and other administrative items. So first, what is a Faculty Learning Community? A Faculty Learning Community or FLC is a voluntary, structured, year-long, multidisciplinary community of practice of size about 8 to 12 that includes goals of building community and the development of SOTL, which is Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. Now that quotation is from Milton Cox's FLC Program Directors and Facilitators Handbook. Milton Cox, a professor at Miami University in Ohio, is the guru of FLCs. Nearly 15 years ago, he had a U.S. Department of Education FIPSI grant. FIPSI stands for the Fund for the Improvement of Post-Secondary Education. So Cox was awarded the grant, was awarded that grant, to research the impact of faculty learning communities, and he's been writing about them and leading workshops ever since. So according to Milton Cox, there are two types of FLCs, cohort-based, and topic-based, as I show on this slide. The cohort-based FLCs address the teaching, learning, and development of faculty or staff that have been particularly affected by isolation, fragmentation, stress, neglect, or chilly climate." End quote. As noted on this slide, the cohort-based FLC includes FLCs for junior faculty, senior faculty, mid-career faculty, and part-time or adjunct faculty. We don't have any of these FLCs on our campus. There hasn't been interest so far, but we'd be happy to consider those if the requests arise. We do have a lecturer liaison who works on programs specifically geared toward the special concerns of lecturers, though. The other type of FLC is the topic-based FLC. That's what we have here. The goals of these FLCs are to create a curriculum designed to address a campus or divisional teaching, learning, or policy or program need, issue, or opportunity. So these FLCs tend to focus on particular themes or issues, again as noted on the slide. So look at the number and variety of proposed FLCs for the 2014-15 academic year. You may want to pause for a moment to examine those more closely. You can see the variety of FLCs proposed from a broad range of topics. And on this slide, I've included both the FLC name and the facilitator or facilitators. OK, so here I've included my picture. I'm Ida Jones. I think most of you know me. I'm director of the Center for the Scholarly Advancement of Learning and Teaching, CSALT. And I'm also the FLC program coordinator and director. So in that role, I coordinate the FLCs, including requesting reports from you, preparing MOUs, and other administrative tasks. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. The easiest way to contact me is by email idaj at csufresno.edu. Now on to your role as facilitator. Your role is crucial. Of course, you propose the FLC. In addition, according to Cox, effective facilitation is essential to creating and sustaining an environment in which faculty learning communities can thrive. Just as faculty learning communities differ qualitatively from other familiar work groups in higher education, the role of facilitator differs from what are perhaps more familiar roles of content expert, lecturer, chairperson, or traditional leader. So I want to point out here that you don't have to be the expert that tells the faculty community members what the community must do. You do set the parameters for the topics and goals, but there's a great deal of flexibility so that you can allow your group to guide the agenda. For example, you may find the initial resource, say a book or an article or something, that the group might want to use, but the members might guide what is relevant, what will be useful, and how it's to be useful. In addition, our FLCs require uh, spending the fall semester in research and then the spring semester 
implementation and assessment. So your role includes not only a facilitator of learning, but also you may act as a political strategist or even an activist to further the community's agenda. For example, we had a Universal Design for Learning FLC several years ago, and the group encouraged members to talk to their chairs and others about what they learned about revamping and re revising courses. You're also a communication special specialist, both to me as director and to your colleagues. In some cases, you may be an entrepreneur moving forward on an agenda for a topic that isn't currently addressed on campus. The MOU, which all of you will sign, has more specifics. So that's it for the introduction to faculty learning communities.